Hello, this is Paul Check. Welcome back to my video blog. Today I'd like to talk about the concept of a fungal infection as a teacher. This is something I know about very intimately. When I was a young man, I believe probably 17, 18 years of age, I was uh, busy racing stock cars and motorcycles. And I remember always having this terrible uh, jock itch and it was just so bad that sometimes I used to scratch it with a screwdriver I'd be working on my car and just scratch it with a screwdriver because it didn't feel like I could even stop the itching with my fingernails and I'd take my underwear off at night and there'd be blood and I'd have scratched my leg right through the skin and when I would go to doctors or uh, medical people they would want to give me some pill but nobody seemed to know what was causing it and they said it was jock itch and the various creams for jock itch didn't seem to do anything for it. So later on in my life when I began studying these things to try to figure out A what was going on with me and then B how to help other people it became very apparent to me that what I had was a fungal infection. Now this is important because if a fungal infection on the surface of your body is able to get inside your body such as through the gut wall or into the inner spaces beneath the skin of your body where it can access your blood then you get what's called a deep fungal infection so there's typically two classes superficial that which is on the surface of your body and deep once the fungal infection gets deep and for example many funguses will send their filaments into the gut wall and bore holes through the gut wall and then penetrate you that way. So if the fungal infection gets deep, it's very, very hard, if at all possible, to get it out of your body. And once they're in there, they're very, very good at lying dormant and just waiting for the one day you eat too many cookies or, or in a stressful environment or do any of the many things that I describe in my DVD series Healing Fungal and Parasite Infections, The Absolute Essentials, which is quite comprehensive for understanding funguses and parasites and can be used by pretty much anybody who can just pay attention. In other words, you don't need a background in medical stuff and uh, I use fairly standard uh, terminology so it's not hard to follow because I wanted it to be uh, understood by the general public. So. Uh, these things are very, very prevalent today. They're very, very problematic. And my first tip for you is, once you understand the difference between a superficial and a deep fungal infection, if you have a superficial fungal infection, it is very, very wise to manage it because if it does penetrate into your body, it is hard, highly unlikely you're not going to get rid of it and you're going to be in a constant dance with that fungus for the rest of your life such as I have been and others that I know, as you can imagine, coaching all sorts of people with these problems. That said, there are some potential benefits to a fungal infection, which I will go into in a minute. So what I'd like to do now is just give you some of the common symptoms of a fungal infection. Itching can be anywhere in your body from anal to between the toes to the groin. But oftentimes you'll find that if you eat something that's too sweet for what your body can process, you will notice itching coming up fairly quick. So if you eat a chocolate bar or a piece of candy or some breakfast cereal or some dessert, and all of a sudden you find your toes itching or your scalp itching or your crotch itching, those are indications right off the bat that you've got an active fungal infection and you've just given it a great big dose of sugar and it is having a party and it's having a party not only on you but in you and as you excite that fungus and they grow more and more they excrete acids in order to penetrate your body so it can leave eruptions in your skin and those eruptions can be almost like little open sores that seem to pop up and then hang out for quite a while or sometimes they just don't clear up at all. You can also, many fungal infections produce ex uh, almost 
identical symptoms to, or maybe even psoriasis. So psoriasis of the skin, big patches of uh, not pretty, damaged, beat up skin. Okay, so itching, interruptions, pimples that don't clear up. Funguses, fungal infections will produce what looks like a pimple. It can often feel sore when you touch it, but if you try to squeeze it, unlike a typical pimple, there's nothing that will come out. It does not go to a white head. It doesn't push, you can't push the toxins out of it and alleviate the pressure because it's actually a fungal growth in there. So it's like a fungal plant or like a little plant in there, but a fungus is kind of a complex organism because it's half plant and half animal. If you treat it with stuff that kills plants, it becomes an animal and moves. If you treat it with animal stuff, then it becomes a plant. So they're very, very evolved and very, very uh, savvy for their ability to adapt. Uh, so another tip for you is if you put a cream on, say you've got a, a skin cream to make your skin clear up, but it almost feels like the same thing just moved to another area. It could be that these little guys are just moving away from what you've put, put on them. <clears throat> so if you keep picking them, then you just break your skin open and make a mess and your face just looks like you've gotten beat up. Uh, very, very common to see that out there. If you're just walking around in public, you can see, oh, that person's been squeezing what they think is a pimple until the cows come home and now they've made a mess of their face, which is quite often an indication that it's a fungus, not an actual pimple. Um, cravings for sweets and starches are very, very common with a superficial or a deep fungal infection. So you might find yourself just ravenously hungry for potato chips or potatoes or any kind of sweet stuff or breakfast cereals or coffee with sweetener added to it. Any kind of thing that sweetens things up of any type particularly will feed funguses. They love starches obviously because that's carbohydrate which converts easily to sugar. Um, funguses typically cause blood sugar disruptions. So people get these ravenous cravings, which is the fungus sending chemicals to their brain to crave them. They eat a pile of sweet stuff or just too much food. Their blood sugar goes way up. Then you have an insulin release to try to balance that. Then you go to a blood sugar low. So people with fungal infections, when I test them, often have both high blood sugar and low blood sugar symptoms at the same time, which means that your adrenal glands and your hormonal system in general is getting one hell of a workout constantly. Vacillating back and forth between blood sugar high and low is vacillating between two things that can kill you and that can shut your brain down. So whenever your brain's threatened by excessive blood sugar or low blood sugar, you get quite a stress reaction. And a lot of people do this all day long and can't figure out why they feel so lousy all the time. Okay. Fatigue is a common side effect uh, of fungal infections, largely due to the imbalances created and the chemical toxicity. Funguses produce very, some of the most toxic chemicals in the world called myco, myco means fungus, toxins. Fungal toxins are actually used in biological warfare to kill the enemy. So they're very, very powerful toxins that they use to control their environment and kill off competitors for food and other things like that. If you study uh, the science of the soil, you can learn all about how funguses work in the soil. They produce mental cloudiness and generally cognitive disorders, inability to remember things, confusion, uh, reading something and 10 seconds later you don't remember what you read, uh, switching left from right. So you're, you're thinking, okay, I gotta remember to turn left. You can't remember what direction you were gonna, so cognitive disorder. Um, joint aches and popping is particularly a symptom of deep fungal infection. Um, if you, for example, notice that after eating something sweet or something that maybe isn't ideal for you, all of a sudden you want to pop your neck, your back, or your shoulders, or your hip starts popping. That's a good indication of a deep fungal infection, particularly then 
if, for example, in the morning when you wake up after you haven't eaten all night, the same symptoms do not occur. Or when you're eating properly or more ideal, you don't have those things. If you can induce those popping symptoms, and if the popping comes with pain, that means you're probably irritating the joint uh, system, the ligaments, the surfaces, and you're getting inflammation in the joint because the fungus can bore right into the joint and start eating things up in there too. So joint aches with popping gets worse, popping with pain, which can lead to musculoskeletal problems and is commonly overlooked when people have chronic musculoskeletal problems because most therapists only think of joints as joints and don't see the connection to diet and glands and organs. Constipation is a common side effect, although it is also not uncommon for people with a fungal infection to go from being constipated for, for several days, which could be one, two, three days, or a week, or ten days, and then all of a sudden they get this rush of loose stool or diarrhea, which could be a day or two, or uh, you know even one day where the body just in a last ditch effort has to push the toxins out to protect itself, and then you're back to constipated. So typically, you're either seeing a lot of constipation or alternating between periods of constipation and loose or diarrhea-like stools would be an indication of a fungal infection. So those are some important symptoms. Now, the fungus can be a helper. Uh, for example, research shows that cancer cells are high sugar consumers. So there's a number of theorists out there, and one of my students, Paul Leendertz, has written some books on cancer, and he found a lot of research supporting the concept that uh, cancer is really largely fed by sugar. I'm sure there's other things that can do it, but the key point I want to make here is that funguses eat sugar up. So one plausible theory that's related to cancer is that people get fungal infections to consume the extra sugar in the body and in the blood to try to protect the body so that it doesn't trigger cancerous growth and developments and disrupt other internal physiological systems such as blood handling. So the body may actually use fungal infections as a means of compensating for not having sound diet and lifestyle practices as a last ditch effort. In other words, the fungus is trying to eat up, uh, clean the mess that a person keeps making up with bad diet. Funguses not only consume sugar, they can consume just about any food stuff you throw in there. And it's important to remember that funguses in nature are decomposers. They eat up dead things, dead things in the soil, last season's leaves, dead creatures that have died, dead microorganisms. But also 85% of all plants out in nature are what are called mycorrhizaformers, which means they share an intimate relationship with funguses. The funguses, which excrete extremely powerful acids, actually dissolve stones and rocks in the soil and liquefy them and they send filaments up the plant roots and they feed the plant liquefied minerals that it can use for its biological functions because plants can't eat stones, but funguses can. And funguses love sugar, so they get to drink some of the sugar from the plant sap. So that's called the symbiotic relationship. Not only do the funguses feed the minerals, but they also protect plants from the parasites that will harm them because that's their sugar source. So they're very, very intelligent creatures that are woven into nature very, very beautifully. So we want to remember that funguses can break down rocks, so they can break down oils that your body can't digest. They can break down synthetic things. They can break down almost anything you could possibly put in your mouth. And since they live off of dead stuff, uh, the more, shall we say, dead food you're eating, the more you're feeding the funguses and the less you're feeding yourself and the more you're putting yourself at risk for health problems. Now, the beautiful thing about fungus is they let you know when you're consuming, thing, consuming things that you should avoid or manage, and this is how they do it. They give you these indicators, and all you gotta do is pay close attention to when you're getting these symptoms and correlate that with 
your diet. Now, there's a lot of lifestyle factors that can also facilitate fungal infections, which I go into in my healing fungal and parasite program. But to keep this fairly brief and manageable, um, just know that your funguses are always teaching you, so they are guiding you so you know what you should be avoiding because it's giving you fungal symptoms. And remember, every time you feed that thing, you're growing that network of fungus and you are playing a very, very dangerous game with yourself in the long run. Antibiotics. If you've ever had a course of antibiotics and you did not follow it with probiotics and high quality foods such as fermented fruit, foods to recolonize your gut with a wide variety of friendly bacteria, then you're probably going to have fungal infections because the antibiotics do not kill funguses. Funguses actually are composed of cells so close to the cells of a human being that any of the drugs that would kill funguses would actually kill your own cells. So they're pretty tricky to wipe out. Certainly there's things out there that can help you manage them, but nothing works as good as just paying attention to the key diet and lifestyle factors that invite them. So if you got antibiotics, they kill off the bacteria. The bacteria is what competes with fungus for territory in the body. The bacteria can compete with funguses, but when there's no bacteria around, the funguses just take the place over and they got free reign. So if you have been on antibiotics, you need to go see a good holistic lifestyle coach or skilled practitioner that knows how to do gut healing and get yourself the necessary tests to find out what the, uh, which strains of bacteria you have for better or for worse, and then get a good probiotic and take a, go get put on a protocol to rehab your gut. Poor quality foods, as I said, if you're eating poor quality foods, you invite fungal infection because if the worse the quality of the food is, the more dead it is and the more the funguses see it as edible. They're there to decompose in nature. So you're like a little estuary. And if you're eating a bunch of dead stuff, they're there to convert that into something else, except um, I, I doubt you're really gonna benefit from the liquid minerals like a plant does and they're probably going to do more damage to you than good. Fungal mycotoxins in a variety of research studies have been shown to decrease immune function and they can also shut down immune communications. The, the immune messengers can be modulated by fungal mycotoxins so that your immune system gets confused. Once your immune system is modulated by fungal my, uh, mycotoxins, you open the door wide to parasites because the body can no, the immune system can no longer effectively police parasites, cancer cells, and a wide variety of other uh, things that the immune system needs to monitor. So it's pretty important to remember that if you're getting too much funguses in there, you're going to get high amounts of mycotoxins, which will disrupt immune function, which can lead to long range complications in your health such as an increased risk of parasite infection. And I would say probably nine out of the 10 people I've healed or coached to healing uh, parasite infections over the years have had a significant fungal infection while they have had a parasite infection. And I talk about how to handle that in my healing fungal and parasite infections program. So some resources for you. Once again, there's a lot more information that I could share here in my DVD series, which comes with a manual, Healing and Fungal and Parasite Infections, The Absolute Essentials. My book, You Are, uh, excuse me, How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy, is going to give you some very basics. If you're going to get healing fungal and parasite infections, most of the information you need is in there, but this is a very good resource to have because there's a lot of things in here that I didn't put in the healing fungal and parasite, such as how to test your core, how to develop your exercise program safely and effectively, and a number of other things. My audio workbook program, You Are What You Eat, tells you a lot about what's in food so you can make better food decisions so that you're not eating the junk that feeds the funguses. You can learn a lot more if you want to take yourself beyond and not only master the information in my book, How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy, but also the information in my Four Doctors ebook, and 
gain even more knowledge than that than my Holistic Lifestyle Coach Level 1 online or live program is ideal for you. It is The program is not designed for the professional. It's designed for the general public and for anyone that wants to get themselves healthy and is a prerequisite for Holistic Lifestyle Coaching Level 2, which is my training program for those of you that want to do Holistic Lifestyle Coaching as a profession or as part of your work. Say maybe you're an exercise professional and you also want to learn Holistic Lifestyle Coaching or a nurse or a doctor. So it's for uh, HLC1 is to get you grounded in those practices so that you can teach them authentically and have first-hand personal experience that the methods work so that it's easier to coach people because you're not just selling a bunch of ideas and don't have to worry about memorizing a lot of fancy dancy stuff because you know the basics and you know they work. So that's our blog for today. Hope you enjoyed my tips on recognizing what a fungal affection is, how to um, manage it, how to know the difference between a superficial and a deep fungal infection, some of the benefits that a fungal infection has for the body, and some resources you can use. I look forward to seeing you in one of my uh, advanced training programs if you'd like to learn more. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Paul Check. If you want more information, go to www.chekinstitute.com. Bye-bye.